Okay, so let's move on to part two of my video series uh, on character modeling and animating. So we have a pretty decent uh, character model here. I'm pretty happy with the UVs. Um, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna texture this just a little bit. Um, so what we'll do is we'll start with the, uh, we'll start with the shirt. So we'll go to the shirt over here and make sure I didn't mess that up. Yeah, so we have the shirt. If you have the Node Wrangler uh, plugin installed, it's just a, you know, it's just a Blender default um, add-on. You can just check. Then if you have a principled BSDF, all you have to do is press Control Shift T and then you find your PBR texture. Uh, I went over this in the previous video where I downloaded this and kind of pulled out the channels that I needed. You just select those and just hit the button and it basically goes. So it's uh, pretty essential to have in your in your pipeline, I would say. A um, couple things I want to do here. I find this to be a little, I don't know, the resolution's not working for me. Um, so so there's a few things you can tweak just using, you know, tiled uh, textures to kind of give them some some unique uh, unique properties. I'm gonna bump up the scale just a touch. I think that looks better. And I also want it to feel more um, rough, like, uh, you know, it's like a, you know, a sack kind of thing. So if we up the scale on the normal, it is gonna look a little bit more grainy, right? Like a little more rough. Um, so that's all good. Now we don't have a metallic channel, so obviously you could mess with the metallic here. Um, I'm just gonna see what kind of what this looks like. Sometimes a metallic feels like it gives materials a little bit of depth. Um, and even, you know, most rough materials kind of do reflect some, some light in a kind of shiny way. Um, so I think a little bit of that is okay. Um, the other thing we can do is we can throw in a color ramp uh, right, on the, right on the base color. So this will allow us to actually tint um, tint this material. So if you click on the white part over here, then we can actually add some hue to this. So I kind of want like a brownish uh, hue kind of thing going on. And maybe I'll, lately I've been really getting into actually using sat hue saturation and value. Um, I think for people who are getting into art and getting into texturing and things like that, it's really, yeah, I mean, it just makes a lot of sense. Usually what I do is I max out the saturation. I find the color that I want first. So maybe like that's the color. And then I can kind of dial back the saturation a little bit um, or maybe make it a bit darker. Um, but I think this is, that's fine um, for this for this model. And then let's go to the pants. So I'm actually gonna throw in the same model. Uh, oops, I just made a mistake. So you gotta be careful when you're working with slots. If I change this here, it's gonna change what that slot is. But really what I do wanna do is I wanna switch the slot um, that I'm working with. So for the pants, I'm going to use the same um, textures. So Control Shift T, and then run it through your setup. Um, I'm also probably going to scale this up, maybe even a little bit more. So you can see we can get some variation even using the same textures, right? And so when we bake this out, it'll all kind of, yeah, it'll it'll look it'll look consistent, like it's in the same style or the same fabric or whatever. Um, so in this case, I want this to be a bit darker. We'll probably still have it in a similar color hue, but we'll go darker and we'll desaturate a little bit um, just to provide a little bit of contrast. And on the pants, maybe I'll just, we'll stick to a metal value um, of zero or near zero. So we'll just kind of play with that. Um, the other thing is this is going to be a zombie character. So the base skin tone, I'm going to actually desaturate um, quite a bit. So, you know, kind of give that ghostly uh, gray kind of look. And then I'm going to darken up the hair just a, just a bit. So I do this all the time, this little mistake where you're working with slots. And if you select the wrong material, it'll overwrite. Um, <laughs> so maybe just watch out for that, right? So we'll change the hair and... We'll just darken this. I think in terms of properties, like a little bit of metallic might be nice. Um, some spec a specular component might kind of give it that. It kind of looks greasy when you do that, so we'll bring that down. Um, the metallic kind of gives it a little bit of you know uh, shininess, I guess. All right, so we will go with that. 
Um, the next thing I usually do is bake everything out. So, um, so far I haven't really used any add-ons. One add-on that I use literally all the time, I think it cost me like 20 bucks or something like that was Simple Bake. Uh, this is not an ad for Simple Bake, but I think what I'm, what I would encourage you is to do is like, if you find add-ons that are paid that just improve your workflow, um, you know, obviously do your research, do your reviews first, find out what you want to use and then just use them. Right. Because I literally use this all the time and baking in blender actually sucks. Um, so what I'm about to show you, I'm going to do it with simple bake. Um, you can do it using the like vanilla blender baking system. There's issues with trying to bake, um, metallic. I think the metallic channel doesn't work or there, it doesn't exist or something you have to bake to, I don't know. Um, I can't remember how it all works, but there's a workaround, but yeah. So for this, all I'm literally going to do is we're going to add the object. Um, actually I'm going to give this a better name first. Let's call this zombie. Then we'll add it. Uh, I usually just go through all the settings each time. We're going to do diffuse metal roughness, normal, uh, open GL was the map we used. So I'm going to do everything at one K, uh, four pixel margin should be fine. Um, sometimes you got to take a look at your margins. If things are super tight, you might need a smaller margin because you could get bleed over. Right? So like when you're baking with a margin, basically what's happening is the baker is going to make the texture spill over the UV by a certain number of pixels. Um, if it goes too far, then you're actually going to bleed into the next uh, UV area. So, uh, something to just keep in mind there with baking, uh, export. I am going to export them. I don't need 16 bit. I'm kind of go for like a PS2 quality kind of vibe, which is, I'm, I'm really into that lately. I think it looks great. Uh, I'll also do copy objects, apply bake, and then GPU and let's save. And usually I like to power save before I uh, do anything destructive. So we'll do a power save. This is another add on. Um, I can't remember if it's built in with blender. I really have, I, I honestly can't remember or if it's from the store or whatever, but um, please get this. This will, this will save you a lot of time. Uh, you start integrating it into your workflow, right? And you power save before you do a major change and yeah, it'll, it'll save you. Um, so let's do, let's bake that. And it should, there we go. So it's done finally. Um, sometimes the baker makes things a little bit more metallic -y or normally normal maps than usual. Uh, I'm just noticing this kind of looks a little funny. So <laughs> we're going to bring that in a, a touch. Um, yeah. So like, it's not actually identical, right? If you look at the two models, this one looks a little bit more washed out kind of, um, this one has got a little bit more, I don't know. So baking does ch tend to change things. You're you know, changing the resolution, you're changing where the textures are painted. Uh, if we go into UV edit and let's just, I don't know, select an image. Let's go to, I've had a few things in this file now, but let's go to, um, diffuse. You can see what I was saying about margin, right? So the thing with baking, do your bake and then check your margin and see even in four pixels here, it's kind of tight, right? So it's something you want to check for. You want to make sure you don't have, uh, overlapping islands. Um, that can be a problem with MIP mapping. If you enable MIP mapping on import, you might get seams. Uh, so that's just a quick, quick thing there. All right. So we have our textures baked. Um, what I want to do is now do some texture painting because we can add a lot of detail, um, just by, just by painting some textures in here. So the first thing I want to look at is definitely the eyes. Um, I'm going to shift click these two vertices, control L. If you hit tab again, we're in texture paint mode and just press this button here. What you're going to get is just, um, just those, you can just paint that area. So let's go to diff the diffuse channel and I get my brush size set up. Um, let's get a couple of colors in here. I'm probably going to go for like, I don't know, some cool color. We'll do like violet purple kind of thing and we'll darken it right? Maybe to there. I'll add that. I'm a big fan of using the color palettes. Uh, it's just, just a nice to have. I don't really want symmetry on in this case. Uh, it could mess some stuff up. Remember these are both using the same location on the texture map. So, 
Um, for the first one, you probably want to do a constant fall off, right? So when you do a constant fall off, it just like all the pixels are, are basically bang on. So we'll do something like this. I usually like to zoom out when I'm looking, doing the eyes because it really has a big impact on like where you perceive, perceive that they're looking, right? Um, so maybe we'll just adjust this slightly. That's probably good. And then what you can do, I'm probably not gonna draw a pupil because they're like kind of dead, right? Um, we can lighten this, so let's lighten it. And I wanna desaturate it. Okay, we'll do that and then we'll add it. Um, if you do a, we'll change the fall off again to linear maybe, you get this kind of effect, right? Which is kind of cool. So we'll leave that for the eyes, I like that. Um, and then what we want to do for the skin and basically everywhere else, it's like you want to add some dirt and some blood maybe. Um, it's pretty easy to do in Blender. What we'll do is we will add a texture. So you click texture, you hit new. Um, this little panel here is where you change it. So we'll change it to clouds. I usually like the harder preset. Um, and I think you also need the texture mask to be set, right? So the texture mask needs to have that as well. Um, when that's done, you can come back to your brush settings and we'll pick something darker, maybe something kind of muddy in hue. And we'll just um, start kind of painting over everything. And in general, like for a model like this, you probably don't want uh, um, symmetry on, right? Because it's this is dirt, like things that the zombie is like picked up um, over time. So. in here um, I'm just going quickly here normally I would save all this to palettes and do all that stuff but yeah so we'll do some red just to kind of right around the mouth definitely do some this guy's been eating eating some brains right so get some of that in there and then you can so for skin tones for sure you know whether it's a zombie or otherwise like there's blues and yellows and, uh, and, and reds basically make up the skin tones that a uh, person has. So, um, even that will give like a lot of depth of feeling to the, to the character model won't feel as, won't feel as stiff. Right. So I'll just finish this up and let me get some up here on the forehead. We'll go back to red for a second. Right. So yeah, this is quick and dirty and maybe we need to paint on some eyebrows too. I'm just noticing there's no eyebrows on this character. So we'll do like a very dark color here. Right, you're gonna be looking at the model from here, ish. Uh, yeah. All right, so that is the model. Um, I've probably been rambling for way too long in this video, so we'll cut this video here. One more thing, just OCD thing. We don't really need the seams, so I'm just gonna go Alt E, clear seams. Um, the UV mapping's already done. Oh, and one more thing I would really strongly suggest is whenever you do texture painting in Blender, pull up your image on the side and you can press alt S or image save. And you'll see it actually saves that, um, external image. Uh, blender can get really get messed up if you forget to save. So just another tip there. All right. So the texture painting is done and next video we will get on to rigging and animating. So thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.